So, hello everyone. Uh, I am Eric. I work at Collabra uh, on the graphics team, um, and I will be talking about a uh, not really hardware enablement project. Uh, <laughs> I had an accident yesterday, and uh, or not? Yeah, when the uh, hit my head, so I've, uh, I've moved my sl slot, uh, and I will, as a result, probably go a little bit slow, and might, uh, we might not make it to the end uh, of the presentation. Uh, but, yeah, um, so that's me. So yeah, the goal, um, the goal here in, in general is, is uh, to implement OpenGL on top of Vulkan, uh, to make a simpler graphic stack in the future of, uh, of the Linux desktop. So there's uh, a few other uh, attempts at this out there uh, that already exists. Uh, I think Silicon has made something called Glove. Uh, it only implements OpenGL ES 2.0, and uh, the uh, CLA requires a copyright assignment there, so which can be tricky for some companies to work with. Uh, Google has Angle. They again also implement only OpenGL ES. Um, and then there's something called VKGL, which targets OpenGL 3 core profile, so it's not going to do uh, legacy OpenGL uh, versions, uh, no fixed function or anything like that. And this is a pretty slow moving project. It's a spare time project for a single developer, and uh, it has a really long way to go before it uh, can be very useful. So for solving this, there's nothing really out there that fits well. Uh, so did I go the wrong way? No. Oh. Yeah, so I guess I swapped these slides. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, so uh, why we want to solve this is, th is that uh, OpenGL is a requirement for uh, supporting uh, desktop applications. Uh, it's um, it's a pretty pretty uh, dated API. It's been around since 1992, and uh, the hardware has changed a lot since then, and uh, so has the software world. So there's a lot of things that OpenGL isn't so well suited for. Uh, my uh, work came out of virtualization, uh, so be able, being able to use uh, GPUs in virtual environments. Uh, I'm working up on uh, Virgil uh, in Mesa for this, and there's some problems with that that um, that we're trying to circumvent by uh, seeing if this venue works or not. Um, yeah, uh, Vulkan is also kind of uh, becoming more and more proven technology and, uh, and it's uh, pretty clear that it's uh, becoming the dominant graphics API going forward, uh, which means that OpenGL has a little bit of a less uh, bright future. Uh, and uh, it's better for the <laughs> graphics community if we can all kind of uh, work on one API rather than multiple ones. But as, as I said, we still need to support all the applications that, uh, that use OpenGL currently. Yeah, and there's all the, some other use cases that can be uh, enabled by this work. For instance, uh, mobile platforms that support Vulkan can get full OpenGL support, which they don't currently have. So my solution to this is called Zinc. Uh, it's an um, it's a Mesa Gallium driver that takes the Gallium API calls and translates them into Vulkan. It's currently in what I would call an early kind of out of tree uh, prototypes uh, stage. The driver works reasonably well. Uh, it supports OpenGL 3.0 on both uh, RadV and uh, and AMV. So the open source in NASA, AMD, uh, and uh, Intel drivers. We haven't tested much on anything else. Uh, some people tried to get it working on NVIDIA, but there were some difficulties with the lack of DRI2. Uh, Dave Early has uh, jumped uh, on this and started contributing a lot of really cool uh, features. Uh, the driver is written in a pretty kind of like naive, happy-go-lucky approach to kind of see what could possibly go wrong, and uh, it turns out it works a lot better than I feared. And uh, yeah, I can run a lot of uh, games and uh, and uh, other demos, uh, applications, uh, 
with a pretty usable performance. Um, I'm not going to talk much about performance because we haven't focused that much about that, uh, that, but for some simple benchmarks, I get roughly half of what i965 provides, and that's with some pretty uh, not great stalls uh, that we're doing kind of to please the Windows system. Um, yeah, so cur currently I'm uh, taking a little bit of a step back and kind of uh, re-engineering it a little bit because a bunch of the early design decisions I've made were turned out to be mistakes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I'm trying to like build a smaller feature version of it uh, that I can upstream in Mesa and then kind of build uh, the more of the features on top of that again. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a Gallium driver. For those who don't know Mesa, Gallium is, an open, uh, is a system that uh, takes OpenGL calls and kind of translates uh, them into a, a more low-level uh, API. And uh, yeah, uh, Sync will kind of take that and translate that to Vulkan. Uh, yeah, and communicate with, with some Windows system. This is, uh, this is the software Windows system, which is not good. Uh, where we have a hardware, like a uh, DMA buff-based thing as well. And here's a rough uh, overview of how a uh, how draw calls kind of, uh, or the data flow of the driver. Uh, so there's, for instance, a compiler that feeds a, uh, a program cache, and uh, there's a pipeline cache that takes in render passes uh, and creates frame buffers, and uh, yeah, feeds that into command buffers. Um, yeah, so we're we're doing. Uh, the shader work with a NUR, uh, which is an SSA-based uh, uh, compiler IR for, uh, in Mesa. Uh, translates that into Spurvy, which is uh, the Vulkan shader uh, IR. Uh, I chose to go that direction rather than something like TGSI, mostly because SSA to SSA is uh, or seemed to be uh, a great fit. Uh, it turns out to be a little bit harder than I thought because of some annoying differences in how they uh, treat some of the fundamental SSA uh, constructs. Um, I will talk more about that. It's written as a re re reusable module, hopefully like similar to the, we currently have a uh, Spur V2 NUR, so it's kind of written in a somewhat similar fashion. Uh, and I'm hoping that with that maybe we can make a, an entry GLSL all the way to Spur V compiler. Uh, in Mesa, it's this isn't a high, like an important goal, but there's, it seems neat to be able to do that without pulling in other compilers for maybe we need to pre-compile some traders, for instance. It does not generate awesome code. Uh, it seems to the Vulkan drivers on desktop kind of make up for the bad code we generate by optimizing it afterwards. Uh, but I fear that this is not going to fly on mobile. Uh, mobile drivers are probably less eager to spend CPU time on optimizing the code first. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit now about the different difficulties uh, we met. Some of these have solutions, some of them have uh, ugly hacks, and yeah. Um, yeah, so control flow, uh, we don't support it. <laughs> Pretty. Uh, Pretty bad. Uh, this is one of the kind of like big ticket things that needs to be fixed, I think, before I can upstream it. Uh, it's um, yeah, I have some prototype, but that kind of crashes and burns in some cases. It's trickier than it sounds, and the reason for this is these SSA differences that I uh, talked about. In NUR, uh, jumps can appear from anywhere inside a basic block, which is a very creative way of defining a basic block, I think. Uh, so, uh, so for instance, uh, yeah, near jump and return, break, continue, this can all uh, do it. And, and some intrinsics also have uh, implied control flow modifications like discard. Um, in a, in Spurvy, all of these uh, terminate the basic block. And uh, that means that addressing five nodes gets pretty hairy. Uh, it's probably not super duper hard to to solve, but I, I think I'm gonna have to like accept uh, not a direct translation here first, and like do something a little bit clever. I haven't haven't uh, really spent much thought about this after kind of hitting this wall. 
Um, yeah, another problem is that the uh, SSA values of, uh, of uh, NERS type, uh, typeless. They're basically just a bucket of bits, uh, which means that we currently just bit cast everything into and from uint. Uh, this creates a lot of needless instructions in a lot of cases, and uh, yeah, it's not not great. Uh, JSON uh, Excel has uh, of Intel has uh, been nice enough to create a prototype for like a kind of a scanning pass that uh, finds out which casts can be uh, removed and kind of replace the different SSA values with uh, typed versions. It doesn't work for all of the stuff, but it's, uh, it doesn't need to. It's kind of uh, only needs to do better than nothing. Uh, there's still, yeah, some constants are still problematic with that, but I can probably, probably extend it uh, and stuff. I haven't tested this pass yet uh, because of time restrictions. Then another thing that needs to be solved that uh, we're not doing off, uh, awesomely is uh, uh, how to bind shader resources to uh, to the shaders. Uh, and in, uh, for those who don't know Vulkan, the uh, the way you address uh, resources or you bind them is through descriptor sets. So you have a, a, a set of like you can have n descriptor sets and they have kind of uh, indexed resources inside of them we currently just push all of this into one big descriptor set which is uh, a pretty easy uh, approach but it's might not be great from performance point of view uh, especially the Vulcan spec suggests that this is not a good idea we stole that idea from the XVK, uh, and it seems to work OK, but uh, at some point we should probably look into doing this a bit more properly. Uh, and I think making a descriptor set per stage, uh, per shader stage, makes this easier. Uh, and we will get much smaller indices there, and that seems, seems good. Yeah, and then. We also need to have, as you draw, you need to, we need to deal with the descriptor sets. Currently, what, what we do is we create a huge descriptor set pool and uh, just allocate from there until the allocation fails. <laughs> then we uh, flush the, uh, the GPU and wait for, for the GPU to finish and uh, reset the pool. That's ov obviously not, uh, not a great idea, and it causes some um, validation errors and uh, some frame rate uh, hiccups. So it's probably better to uh, have multiple smaller pools and, and uh, keep track of how many uh, how many descriptors we've used from there and uh, you know, use some fences to automatically wait if the next uh, thing wasn't finished yet on the GPU. Yeah, uh, we, for those who don't know what pipeline objects are, they're uh, an object in Vulkan that encapsulates pretty, pretty much all of the draw states. Uh, these are relatively expensive to create, uh, so uh, so we try to cache them and, uh, and keep them uh, around for the next time. We try to use the same draw state. Um, we currently just do that kind of naively, put them in a hash map, uh, but in the future we want to move to uh, doing in building a non-optimized version of this uh, eagerly, and then kind of in a, have a background thread that creates optimized. Uh, pipelines instead. Uh, this is what the XVK does, and it seems to work w uh, well for them. Uh, if any of the Intel driver people is listening, it would be great if you guys started respecting the disable optimization bit for this, this plan. Uh, yeah, anyway, so this, is, uh, this whole thing is similar to uh, variant caching, and it's, yeah, it's, it's not really a big question what to do here. Yeah, and we need to also uh, deal with image layouts, which is one of the big differences with OpenGL. Um, for those who doesn't know quite what that is, that it's kind of like a, it's a hint to the driver what uh, or what you're going to do with a with an image. So you can, for instance, be set in a state where you can only do rendering to it, or you can only do texturing for from it. And generally speaking, these optimizations or these might have some optimizations on the on the hardware level where they're faster at being accessed. We just use the big hammer called layout general and translate to that as early as we can and just keep them there. 
where every operation is allowed, but the performance isn't necessarily great. Uh, it's, this is not a big problem for us yet, mainly because uh, we're mostly CPU limited rather than GPU limited. Um, of course, depends on the application, but yeah. It has some nasty implications with, uh, with raisiness with multiple contexts where the problem is that the resource has, uh, has uh, different, like the, the resources can be shared and the context is the only one who kind of sees when the transition happens. So we need to insert some fencing or something there to make that sure we're not doing that. I haven't tried anything that does multiple contexts, uh, contexts yet. Um, in addition to this, Angle is doing some really cool work of uh, building something called a frame graph, which is like a you kind of build a timeline of uh, what's happening with things and then issuing things uh, so you can uh, do move your image transfers as early as possible, which is supposedly better for performance. I can imagine we can do, like, just steal their ideas there and uh, something. But this, I think, comes down the line a bit from where we're not now. Uh, yeah, and uh, so uniforms is also kind of a little bit different in OpenGL. You can have like uh, freestanding, like default, uh, default uniforms that um, are a default uniform block. And in Gallium, this is a little bit, yeah, it's the, they are, look different from the IR and uh, stuff like that. We basically just do a shader, uh, a compiler pass that transforms them into uh, into a uh, uniform block. There's already some stuff in, uh, in uh, Gallim to do this by default, but we can't use that for some technical reasons yet. Um, yeah. There's some difficulties here. It's not really that interesting. I'm going to just go. <laughs> um, yeah, and then one other issue is that we're, we're depending for some uh, OpenGL uh, 3.0 features, stuff like that. We're depend on some uh, ext extensions and stuff like uh, vk ext transform uh, transform feedback i'm not so sure we can rely on that forever uh, and probably not at all on mobile uh, so uh, we need to rethink some of these solutions i uh, kind of can envision some of this stuff being done with a giant compute shader that uh, you inline all the different shader stages apart from the fragment shader into and kind of uh, build some queues. Basically, re-implement the GPU pipeline <laughs> in compute shader. People, some people have done this before uh, with CUDA, and it's pr pretty successful. So uh, so it, it is an <coughs> option, but there's maybe it's better to do some more targeted, smaller things for simple features where we maybe not f fully support the spec, but or <coughs> get applications running. We'll see. Yeah, there's other extensions than that that has the same uh, same problem. So yeah, we're currently supporting OpenGL 3.0, but there's a little bit of an asterisk there. There's some features we're not missing. Uh, most of these are uh, uh, fixed function kind of details. Uh, polygon mode is different in Vulkan and OpenGL, where in OpenGL you can specify a different polygon mode for front and back faces. And on Vulkan, you can only support one, uh, specify one. So we just currently issue a warning if, uh, if they're different and uh, use the front, uh, front face state for that. I haven't seen any applications fail with it, this, but as we test more applications, I'm sure there's some CAD applications that aren't going to render cor correctly. Um, there's several emulation paths we can try, something like drawing uh, all of the back faces first and then all of the front faces and kind of assume the ordering isn't important. Uh, we can write out the primitives to, uh, to a buffer and like stream it out and uh, use a geometry shader to yeah, construct triangles afterwards, maybe. I don't know. Um, it's a pretty low, uh, low uh, priority issue to fix. Texture borders are a little bit different. In OpenGL, you can have arbitrary texture border uh, colors. And in Vulkan, there's three different ones you can have. Transparent black, opaque black, and opaque white. Uh, we just hard code it as transparent black all the time. And uh, I've only seen synthetic tests uh, give any problems. But 
Uh, it's totally possible to do this by uh, injecting some shader code. Uh, it's not actually that bad to do that, uh, but uh, yeah, it's not awesome. Yeah, if needed, we could implement like a, some extension to support more modes, but I doubt it's going to be important. Um, yeah, point size. Uh, you you can either in OpenGL you can either write GL, the GL point size uh, output in in the vertex shader, or you can set a uh, fixed point point size for the whole uh, draw call. Uh, we need to like have some in Vulkan. You can only write the vertex shader. We haven't uh, done any forwarding there of that state. It's kind of boring code to write, but it's relatively easy. Uh, and I think also some of the other uh, drivers that are working to be upstream are going to need something similar. So maybe we can work with them on a shared solution. Yeah, alpha testing. Uh, it is, in theory, very simple to implement, but it requires uh, requires control flow, which we don't support. Uh, yeah, so this uh, yeah. if, we fix, if we fix the control flow issue, this will go away very, very quickly. So currently, uh, we support uh, OpenGL 2.1, like as the lowest set of uh, features we can support. It requires Vulkan 1.0 and a bunch of different uh, physical device features, which we don't test for, so yeah. <laughs> uh, probably will before we land this driver, but uh, maybe with an override or something so we can run things even if if it's not perfect. Uh, yeah, and OpenGL 3.0 requires two more XT extensions. Those are both uh, enabled on RADV and ANV, so on both of those drivers we get 3.0. Um, I had some slides about uh, about future versions, but I decided to cut them. Uh, they're in the slide deck if someone wants to download it and read some more. It basically goes through which Vulkan features we're going to require for uh, all the way up to 4.6. Yeah, so uh, in the future uh, there's a bunch of more stuff to be done. Uh, the biggest problem is that the compiler is not as great as it could be. I'm not really a compiler guy, so uh, uh, if someone who knows compilers would like to help out, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, and then it's like re fixing rendering issues and applications and uh, upstreaming in Mesa. Uh, yeah, and after that, it's like cracking away on, on the newer OpenGL versions. Currently, I'm kind of the bottleneck here, and uh, I'm really, really sorry about that for anyone who wants to contribute. Uh, I'm, I would be, be very willing to have a discussion on fixing that somehow. So yeah, any questions? Hmm? Two minutes. Two minutes, so one or two questions, I guess. Um, how viable would it be to um, take this project and run it outside of the um, Mesa um, framework, I'd say? Like, if you want to... Uh, I know Apple is dropping uh, OpenGL support on their address, so it's only a matter of time uh, before we need to do something like this. Um, how reliant are you on the existing code base for, from Gallium? And other, and, or how viable would it be to ship something like this outside of... So I think uh, I think the if I were to, to to have a crack at this myself, I think I would have gone the other way around and gotten Mesa to run on uh, on macOS. I think there are like builds like CI checks and stuff in Mesa for macOS. I think it works. Uh, and something very similar to Zinc, I think, would be needed, but that outputs uh, metal instead. Uh, there are some people who have. Yes, molten VK is interesting, but I think layering emulation on top of emulation is a way to insanity. I uh, <laughs> like if someone wants to try it out, they're uh, like they're free to, uh, and you know if they report some bugs, that's that's great. Uh, I will you know have a look at that, but uh, I don't have a Mac. I'm not gonna give this a try. <laughs> yeah. All right, any more questions? Quick one. 
or not at all. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Also, we're hiring. <laughs>